So I think uh, we we can begin our session too while uh, Nikhil shares the screen for the reading. And uh, as we know from the last reading session onwards, we have been uh, reading uh, this uh, memorandum submitted by Baba Sahib Ambedkar on 29th October 1942 uh, to the um, to the Governor General of India. And this uh, reading uh, is being done in our virtual reading class in order to understand how Dr. Baba Sahib's Baba Sahib Ambedkar's mind worked uh, to when he has prepared some kind of a policy memorandum. And this is aptly titled as the memorandum. And memorandum is to write a memorandum. It, it is not an easy thing because um, it needs a lot of uh, digging into the evidences, understanding the problem as it is based on the uh, uh, statistics and, and, and uh, data and the facts. So you need to have a mind of a researcher whenever you want to attempt to, to uh, write a policy memo or to analyze any policy domain. And to be a researcher, we have to have several tools in our hands. And one of the important tools is to have the various access to various databases and information which, which is you know, available by the authenticated sources. So uh, one of the ways by which uh, one, 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 one garner the data is to look into the uh, data sources. Like in this case, Baba Sambedkar has looked into the census and uh, the data available by the government on the representation. And in many of uh, Baba Sahib's writings, we can see that he has brought into use the data of the election commission and a and lot of uh, facts or figures like in thoughts in Pakistan, he has used a, a lot of data. So we can say that Baba Sambedkar was somebody who was very much, uh, you know, data driven. You know, he was he was not somebody who was, uh, you know, creating uh, the evidences for the problems without having facts. And uh, now nowadays there are a lot of tools because of the advancements in technologies that offer us the methods or the programs by which we can we can we can glean we can extract from the uh, large data sources the kind of information that we need so uh, one of the things that we can we can you know uh, learn from this particular reading is uh, you know data analysis and uh, there are a lot of courses available now where one can one can one can go and you know learn a lot of this uh, uh, analytical and quantitative methods so that's the uh, first thing that I wanted to begin um, uh, to talk. Uh, and uh, secondly, it's very important to have some very important tools in our hands. Like one of the tools is to put a, a rupee number to all the options and find out exact quantified value of 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 the of the of the solution that is required. And uh, that's a very important term. And then analyze the policy in terms of uh, equity, not only in, in, in terms of the efficiency, but also in terms of the equity and also in terms of, uh, you know, uh, 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 liberty, as we have seen, as Baba Sambedkar has so beautifully elaborated in a lot of his writings and speeches. So, you see, you have a matrix of the values on which you, you evaluate a lot of uh, policy solutions and yeah and you know there can be a lot of policy options for solving a single problem some of the policy options can be you know costly some of the uh, policy options can compromise with some values so you know we have to examine all these uh, uh, you know options in terms of various value systems various uh, you know uh, uh, frameworks so that you know we arrive at the optimum policy intervention and um, that's what we we do. Uh, we 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 can see when we are we are we are studying this very important memorandum which Baba Sambedkar drafted. And I thought that you know as a way of uh, taking the learning of this these classes further, I I thought that it would be very interesting that somebody analyzes 
that you know the impact of this policy memorandum you know whatever baba sambedkar demanded what happened after 1942 how did the government respond that's number one you know whether the government started recruiting the scheduled castes so the no, number one thing will be the the problems that baba sambedkar has raised in this policy memorandum and the solutions that he gave how they played out in the history that's number one and some of you can undertake this exercise and secondly i would think that um what interesting will be to see how you know uh, baba sahab ambedkar uh, had himself lobbied uh you know which, which is called the advocacy or the policy advocacy how dr baba sahab ambedkar has played with influential uh, pressure groups in order to get the policy into place through various mechanism because even if we put a policy memo or memorandum it might not be accepted by the government you need to create a pressure for in order for that policy to be implemented so i think these are the two important areas that i think um, some of you who are young scholars can concentrate and take ahead as to you know take the points from the 1942 policy memo and see how baba sahab ambedkar succeeded in getting the policies implemented in the subsequent years that's number one number two is you know uh, how baba sahab ambedkar got it done so these two questions are very important that i think some of you who are having this research orientation can look into so uh, without uh, you know uh, any further comments i would request nikhil to kindly keep on carry on reading further and we will stop as and when required jay bhim to everyone uh, we'll resume from where we left uh, last time so that is uh, we have to read the part 2 inadequate representation in the central executive so i'll start uh, point number 8 uh, the government of india has been very tardy in recognizing the right of the scheduled castes for representation in the central executive this has been a very sure point with the scheduled castes for they hold that whatever may have been their political status in the past since the round table conference their political status had become equal to the status of, of that of the muslims and if the muslims have a right to representation in the central executive so have the scheduled castes there is no doubt that their contention is well founded at the round table conference it was the demand of the scheduled caste and not merely of the muslims that provision for the adequate representation of the scheduled caste should be made by law the hindu point of view was not opposed to this demand all that the hindu said was that it should be left to convention ultimately a compromise was arrived at and it was agreed that the instrument of instructions to the governors of the provinces and the governor general of india should contain a specific clause imposing upon them the obligation to endeavor to include representatives of important minority communities although the communities were not specified there could be no doubt that the phrase important minorities was intended to include the scheduled castes at long last the government of india has recognized this obligation to give representation to the scheduled caste in the cabinet okay so uh, whenever we 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 are uh, planning to draft any any policy memorandum it's very important to bear in mind the history of certain things and uh, history is very important as to how that point in time has been arrived and historical analysis has got its own importance and 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 the importance of that goes back to now a well, very well founded research called thinking in time in the, you know it was published by the harvard university in terms of how the history or understanding the history can help us to take the decisions in a way that 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 can benefit the people so here we can see a little bit of historical analysis and and as a follow out of this historical analysis i think one of the thing is very very evident here in 1942 memorandum is dr baba sambedkar is, has claimed the minority status for the scheduled caste 
And I think this is a very important point that Baba Sambitkar has argued for a minority status for the scheduled caste in the roundtable conference as a separate you know, political group, having the separate need of their civil and political rights. And here in this paragraph, Baba Sambitkar is making a point very emphatically that the scheduled caste form the minority communities. And he says that by virtue of that, you know, there has to be a law for their adequate representation. It should not go by mere convention. So the Hindus, particularly Gandhi, were arguing that, you know, it should be by the convention. It should not be by the law. And Baba Sambitkar says that, you know, there has to be a, a, a law saying that, you know, there has to be adequate representation. And 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 then he, he says that a compromise was was reached, and that compromise is of course Pune Pact, isn't it? And um, according to which, the instrument of instructions to the governors of the provinces and the governor general of India should contain a specific clause imposing upon them the obligation to endeavor to include representative of the important minorities. So this point of uh, of 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 scheduled caste being the minorities. Has become a very important point, and 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 when when the scheduled cash federation lost elections, which which was bound to because of the faulty electoral system, that you know uh, the British were not inclined to uh, inclined to give the minority status to the scheduled caste, and that was the real fight because the the, the Congress, which was dominated by the upper caste Hindus, they 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 never wanted to give that kind of a minority status to the scheduled caste. And and that has been a very rallying point. And that therefore, you know, after 1946, which, whichever commission came, they 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 declined to accept the scheduled caste as a minority. And that was one of the crises which led Baba Sambedkar to go uh, to England and advocacy, advocate for for this for the rights of the scheduled caste. So very important points are here. You know, it, it looks it is this memorandum looks, you know, uh, uh, just like another policy memorandum. It's not. It's very deep. And it's a very historical document that, you know, uh, straight away coming from the pen of Dr. Baba Sambedkar, having, having such a far-reaching impact in the history of India. So, uh, at long last, the government of India has recognized this obligation to give representation to, uh, to the scheduled caste in the cabinet. So, you see, there, there is a central executive, which was made up, uh, constituted of 141 member. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, for the first time, a scheduled caste uh, representation was was being given, and that was of course Baba Saheb Ambedkar, you know, who became the member of the cabinet, vice executive uh, members, you know, executive council. So, anything from anybody? Before we we go on further. If not, then we can continue to read. Oh, sure. Point number nine. It must, however, be said that this delay in the recognition of their right has lost much of its virtue by reason of the delay and has not removed this grievance. For the scheduled caste feel that their representation in the cabinet is very inadequate. In the cabinet of 15, there is one member of the scheduled caste while the Muslims have three members. The grievances arise by reason of the great contrast between the representation granted to the various communities and their needs and their numbers. If population alone was the criteria, there is no doubt that the scheduled castes are very near to the Muslims in the matter of population. It is therefore only fair to say that if the Muslims have three, the scheduled caste should at least have two in a cabinet of 15. As it is, the communal formation of the cabinet seems to be governed by no principle. The six who numbers only millions and the untouchables who number 40 millions are placed on the same footing. Okay. So you see, uh, this is very important that you know the representation according to the proportion of the population. And we have seen that in the history of India, the scheduled caste were always underrepresented. And, and in the last uh, sentence is very clear that the six are only one million in number, and the untouchables are forty million in number, forty times bigger than the population of the six compared to the population of the as as many as Muslims there are. But the representation is is just one, and that that came very late. 
isn't it? That came after a long fight. So this is a very important point, and 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 the principles of 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 representation is not there. There is no principle as to how the cabinet will be constituted. I I I particularly find reading this very interesting, and and you know there is so much that one can learn as to how the data can be analyzed and presented. And you know how the points can be made. It's a very important text that you know I think needs to be read and read again. So kindly, if there is anything from any any of you, please. Uh, please. Yes. Yes. Please go on. Hello. Sure. Uh, point number 10, the position of the scheduled caste in Indian politics needs a great deal of stabilization and there can be no doubt that the only effective remedy of stabilizing their position in Indian politics is to give them representation in the cabinet which is demanded by their numbers and their needs. I am sure I am not disclosing any secrets. When I say that, in the course of the interview that I had with Sir Stafford Cripps when he came to India, he told me that one of the principal objects of His Majesty's government was to stabilize the position of scheduled caste by their inclusion in the central executive, which was to be formed during the interim period so that the Constituent Assembly, which under his proposals was to meet to draft the new constitution, will find their positions established beyond challenge. I request that this policy should be given effect to when the next step in the direction of the Indianization of the Executive Council takes place. Uh, just uh, hold on a minute, because I think there are some very important points in terms of, uh, uh, you know, how Dr. Baba Sambedkar had an interview with uh, Stafford Cripps and we know in the history there was a Cripps mission plan and uh, and you know it was the uh, you know principal object was to stabilize what is called the uh, position of the scheduled caste by the inclusion inclusion in the central executive just one minute huh? just one minute mm. sorry about that So you see this uh, historical snapshot that Baba Sambedkar is taking here in terms of uh, the position of the scheduled caste in terms of their inclusion in the central executive, which was to be formed during the interim period. So that the constitution, constituent assembly, which under his proposal was to meet, to draft the new constitution, will find their position established beyond challenge. So you see the constitution making process was going on for a long time in India in terms of forming a constituent assembly and eventually it was formed in 1946. But the talk about Indians having their own constitution was going on long back, long before that the constituent assembly came, came into being. And uh, what was going to be the composition of the constitution, constituent assembly, uh, how it was going to be formed, where all the discussions that were going on after the Crips mission or during the war, uh, you know, 1942 August offer. And uh, that's why I think these are very important historical points that we need to bear in mind. The last point is very important that I request that this policy should be given effect to when the next step in the direction of the Indianization of the Executive Council takes place. You see, these, the cabinet was called Executive Council and uh, uh, here already the steps towards the Indianization of the Executive Council were taken. So you see, when we are talking about the, the transfer of power to the Indians, uh, it, it's already taking place, isn't it? It's already happening. It's already the power is getting into the hands of the Indians. And, and this is the policy memo of 1942. So there are some very historical uh, important points here. I just wanted to bring forth while we read it. So uh, anything by anybody? Or we can go ahead reading. 
Sir, we are not much aware of this uh, Sir Stafford Kipps uh, uh, Commission. Uh, what was the agenda and uh, is there any anything? Uh... See, there is, uh, you know, there were several missions and uh, the during the World War II, during the World War II, the British uh, wanted uh, India's help in the war efforts. So they came up with what is called the August offer of 1940 and then this mission started coming to India. And uh, Crips, uh, Sir Crips came with certain points to uh, you know transfer the power of uh, you know to the government to the to the people of india and subsequently then we see that there was a cabinet mission plan in 1945 i think if i'm not wrong and the cabinet mission plan had 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 stafford creeps alexander uh, and uh, lin lithgo and you know uh, there were three members who came to uh, india to ascertain how the transfer of power will take place how the new constitution of india will come into being so, you know, that is a period during the World War II that was, that is a very active period in the Indian political uh, political realm when the power was transferred from the British to the Indians, isn't it? So, how do you do that? What will be the terms? So, for example, to give you an example, there was, you know, initially the Labour government agreed, uh, you know, had a deadline to transfer the power to the Indians was June 1948. But they sped up the process and, and you know, they, they did it on the 15th of August 1947. So, you see, uh, one of the things is that because of this abrupt transfer of power, you know, it led to the partition of India. Okay, if partition of India has take, taken place, it couldn't have been avoided. But then because of this hasty decision, a lot of people had died because of the sudden uh, partition of, of the British India. And it has implications on, on the scheduled caste because, you know, they hadn't had the chance to voice their 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 political grievances. Somehow, Baba Sambedkar won uh, all majority of the rights for the scheduled caste. You know, he said that he won't agree the constitution where, you know, the uh, scheduled caste are not represented. And as the history goes, you know, Dr. Baba Sambedkar didn't come into the constitutional assembly because of the mercy of the of the caste Hindus. He, he came on his own uh, power of mobilization. And uh, there was a statement by Churchill that the uh, untouchables should not be at the mercy of, of the of the majority of the caste Hindus. So you see this these are commissions that you can uh, you can you can you can study at large, isn't it? What happened in you know, August offer, what happened in the in the Crips mission, what happened in the in the cabinet mission plan and the cabinet mission plan led to the final constitution of the constituent assembly in 1946. So maybe we have Dhara, she might be able to share more. Dhara, you want to say something on this? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, considering uh, the British government outsider, hmm. uh, uh, they don't have any motivation to discriminate, discriminate between the sections. But uh, still we see the, uh, uh, the people who were in the power earlier they are in the power in the British government. So the caste is mixed with the colonialism and uh, the unique structures. Good. Good, Dara, good. Anybody who wants to uh, say anything? Ubej, is that clear to you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, oh, I'm just connecting the, uh, connecting the uh, things. Miss, in 1928, near about 1928, Hmm. That Simon Commission uh, was first uh, 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 tried to uh, uh, means uh, uh, review review the uh, constitutional uh, 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 this uh, power sharing kind of things in in the country, yes. and it took almost uh, means if uh, it, it it is the period era of forty two, it means uh, uh, four and to twenty four years hmm. long long 24 long struggle has been fought for uh, uh, having our stake in the assembly yes, yes, yes. that's very nice Liput. you know the world war one forced the british government to give the guarantee to the indians for the self-governance so 1917 there was an august declaration 1917 which said that the power will be transferred to the Indians progressively because that was the World War I, one and the British wanted India's help in the war efforts. 
and uh, after that there was a commission called the south borough commission which came into existence and uh, dr baba sambedkar he was just he had just arrived on the scene from the from the columbia university and he was asked to give the evidence before the south borough commission which is a worth studying document and hopefully we will be looking at it in our in our next trading session south borough commission the evidence before the south borough mm -hmm. commission where baba sambedkar demands a lot of uh, things the representation for the for the scheduled castes and uh, then moving on the government of india comes up with called the montego chemsport sport reform and the first uh, constitution of india as we can say montford uh, you know uh, government which gives a lot of power to the indians and then in, in order to review the working of that the simon commission came into india to review the working of the 1919 act and uh, the simon commission went back with a report a white paper and on that white paper there was to be a discussion in 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 england so the the dates were up to 10 years so 1919 the next date for the enactment of the new law was 1919 the simon commission came and uh, you know there was it you know it, it led to a bigger discussion it led to the round tables in england three round table conferences and the deliberation in three round conference you know we know how baba sambedkar has won the rights for the scheduled caste in the round table conferences and how that was denied to the to the scheduled caste which would have dramatically changed the situation of the scheduled caste and a 1935 government of india act came into being based on the simon commission discussion in the round table conference and that was the first 1935 is the first constitution mini constitution of india and based on that you know a lot of demands were made elections were fought in 1937 in election in india and therefore the nomination and elected members came to being so the point here is you know to to track the history in a way that will help us to understand you know how we deal with the present realities and i think this is the whole point of studying such kind of 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 the memorandum so the little bit of history will make a uh, clear umesh as to you know what baba sambedkar is talking about here right this is yes, sir true anyone has anything to say sir how baba saheb ambedkar has a faith in a good intention of british uh, in the reform of scheduled caste see baba sambedkar hadn't had any faith in 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 anything he was having the faith in the strength of his you know uh, his own powers because since the british came to india indians knew that they are not going to stay here for forever and the whole game was you know which community will get the power and that is what has happened in the indian situation uh, the 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 british couldn't hold on to the power so baba sambedkar didn't you know had a trust in the british government though the british had the democracy you know in 16th 15th century you know, they had democratic conventions they had rights they had come up with habeas corpus and it was better than you know the the the, the, the other colonial states which were ruled by by you know other means so you know the processes dr baba sambedkar had a faith in the process he had a faith in the process of communication negotiation you know uh, influencing the powers there to be that to be so i think that is the beauty of dr baba sambedkar that he didn't had 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 distrust or that because the british could be you know relied upon because they were the neutral player players right so you know they they went on favoring the 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 brahmins for a long time at the cost of the untouchables in the history of a country isn't it they, they gave them the 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 education they 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 they, 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 they supported their what is called the uh, uh, other other important so they gave uh, this what is called the uh, a lot of benefits to the to the upper castes and on record isn't it they didn't tamper with the social sort of powers social dynamics of this of this of this country they didn't in, in other words tackle with with the caste system uh, tackle the caste system and that has been a big problem so unless the people started asserting and the british has only interest in governing the country so whoever they find could help them to govern the country and you know so they 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 allied with what is called the upper castes and that's the history of this country 
so you know this is not about british or whatever it is the power of the movement it is the power of the people it is the power of the leader do you understand dara what i'm saying yes yes sir uh, it is not that the british has given us the rights yes isn't it they ruled this country for a long period they didn't do anything to ameliorate the situation of the of the of the majority of the people right yes any anybody has any comment if not then we will move further i will uh, read further yeah. uh, third absence of representation in the public services Uh, point number eleven: No greater injustice has been done to the scheduled caste than in the matter of their employment in public services. Having regard to the scope of this memorandum, I can deal only with those services with which the central government is particularly concerned. They fall into two classes: a) the ICS, second the central services. uh those recruited on an all india basis and those recruited locally point number 12 anyone who examines the communal composition of these services can have no manner of doubt that the scheduled caste have been rigorously excluded from both these services to give an idea of the rigorous exclusion of the scheduled caste from these services i like to present the following facts i will first uh take the position as it stands in the indian civil service the communal composition of the indian civil service as it stands at present 1942 is as follows so uh, here is the representation mentioned in which uh, as you can see among the total 1056 uh, Uh, there is a composition in which uh, the top uh, community is europeans and as you can see there is only one uh, officer from the scheduled caste so i'll read further yeah 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 out of the 1056 men in the indian civil services there is only one from the scheduled caste such is a state of affairs so far as the ics is concerned in the matter of the recruitment to the central services the condition of the scheduled caste is equally bad i do not propose to quote any figures it is quite unnecessary to overburden this memorandum with facts for there is a clear admission on the part of the home department of the government of india relating to this question in one of their office memoranda relating to the recruitment of the different communities the home department say this department are much concerned at the almost total lack of progress in the recruitment of the members of the depressed classes as revealed by the information available the memorandum from which the above statement is quoted is number 4538 and is dated 1st june 1939 and records the state of affairs as it existed on that day Yes, yes. So you see, now we are turning on to the the third grievance of the scheduled caste, that absence of representation in the public services. It doesn't say adequate or in, inadequate. He says there is a total absence of representation in the public services, and he proves his case very conclusively, conclusively by citing at the Indian civil services. So imagine nineteen forty two, the data we Dr. Baba Sambar has given, is is very he shows very clearly that in the forty million. schedule caste has only one member in the indian civil services so you can imagine you know the state of representation there and in terms of the uh, uh, central uh, services uh, he has directly quoted from the home department and he has not only quoted it he has also given a reference to that so what we learn from here is whenever we state something uh, in terms of putting up the facts you know we have to find the authenticate sources isn't it so authenticate source in in case of the first ics you know uh, data is very clearly laid out by baba sambedkar and the second the issue is very complex and it needed lot of churning in of the statistical data 
डॉक्टर बाबा साहब अम्बेडकर हैज टेकन डायरेक्टली फ्रॉम द अथॉरिटी दैट मैटर्स एंड इट्स द होम डिपार्टमेंट and he has given us the 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 reference of the office memorandum so we we begin to learn how to uh, you know uh, quote the facts how to mention it where it is where we are supposed to go for the larger analysis of the data where we are supposed to you know just put the information that is really want to prove the point so this is what is a beauty of this memorandum right it's a very beautifully laid out memorandum as we can as we begin to we can to understand we begin to see the picture as clearly you know as we can okay right i'll continue further yeah, please please so kindly throw light on the uh... paragraph quoted uh, that uh, in 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 uh, this this department are much concerned at the most total lack of progress so this uh, home department which was handling the recruitment right the home department handles the recruitments at the central government level there is a department now called the dopt department of uh, personnel and training which handles the recruitment of the of the ics or you know all india services so they have provided the data and and they might be having the information as it is saying that they have the information which proves that there is no progress in the recruitment of the members of the depressed classes right so the home department must surely have the information and very large information they might be having of many central government departments in their hands and they have analyzed it and they have come up to the conclusion that there is no representation for the scheduled caste in the central government services right right sir thank you so this that gives us a hint as to if we want to know the statistics we can write to the home ministry and try to get the information using the right information act today i don't know whether they will they will they will share that information or not but you know they have all the information as to you know how many communities what what level of representation there is if not then we can conduct our own surveys right yes uh, that was that is required means that yeah. the structure is now the data data is not available of any kind oh. very true very true should we move on no sir yeah point number 13 how is it that other communities have found a place in the services controlled by the government of india what are the reasons for the exclusion of the scheduled castes as will be seen the reasons are to be found in the uh, sorry i uh, as will uh, be seen the reasons are to be found in the difference in the principles and methods for securing communal representation which the government of india has adopted towards the scheduled caste and the other minority communities in india the principle of communal representation in the services centrally controlled came into operation in 1925 when the government of india accepted a resolution of mr nair on the need of communal representation in public services moved in the central assembly on 10th march 1923 in which he complained that the public service was entirely monopolized by the hindus and particularly by the brahmins and that the other communities had found it extremely difficult to secure a footing in pursuance of this resolution the method adopted by the government of india was to reserve one third of all permanent vacancies for direct recruitment for the redress the redress of community communal inequalities so this is some of you can go into this uh, mr nayar's uh, you know uh, appeal and uh, you know i'm sure it if you if you dig into the archives we can find out this this particular uh, resolution and uh, you know how he he state there must be a lot of data proving that the whole of the central government is is you know represented by 
the uh, monopolized by the Hindus and particularly by the Brahmins. Very important points, isn't it? You know, yeah, we can we can we can based on that, you know, a lot of arguments can be developed. Right? Am I right or wrong? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is such a invaluable information. Yes. From here, a uh, lot of research work can be undertaken. Yeah. So the the in nineteen twenty five, it was it was to be. It was agreed that one third of all the permanent seats, vacancies for direct recruitment for the redress of the communal inequalities. Right. Let's read further. Still, uh, I am having uh, one one uh, page over here uh, means in, in somewhere. Uh, still, they uh, say ki not found any suitable candidate in the group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it belongs. Still goes on. You know, it has not changed a much. It has not changed a lot. Right. Yes. Sir. <laughs> Uh, this method of giving effect uh, to the policy of communal representation in public services did not satisfy the non-Hindu communities. The matter was taken up at the roundtable conference and, the, and a demand was made for devising a more effective method of gaining the object. This demand was accepted by the Secretary of State and by Government of India and given effect to, uh, to in the Home Department Resolution number. F fourteen seven eight thirty three of four July nineteen thirty four. Uh, it is this resolution which is now in operation and constitutes the Magna Carta, uh, Charta, securing justice to all communities in the public services of the country. A reference to the provisions of this resolution is very necessary. It will show why the other minority communities have been so well represented in the public services and why the scheduled caste have not been represented at all. The resolution has two fundamental provisions and which, as compared with the old resolution of 1923, are quite new. It declares what communities are to be treated as minorities for the purposes of recruitment to public services. It defines a fixed proportion of annual vacancies which are to be allotted in the communities declared as minorities. These are the provisions laid down by the resolution of 1934 for securing representation to the various communities. Coming to particulars, the resolution in the first place defines the following communities as minorities. Muslims, Anglo-Indians, Indian Christians, Sikhs, Parsis. In the second place, the resolution fixes the following proportion of annual vacancies to be filled by members belonging to the above mentioned minorities. Propositions fixed by the resolution of 4 July 1934. Uh, this is the breakup uh, that is mentioned. Okay. Um, okay, now this is very self-explanatory. What is most important is this that there has been effort to give the representation, adequate representation to minorities. But if you if you look at it in the in the point number 17, the scheduled castes were not included as the minority. And that's the whole point about it. Because that is what has happened after the Puna Pact. Okay, the uh, the communal award came with uh, 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 an idea that the scheduled caste form the separate minority. They are not Hindus. So that's what Baba Sambedkar has been emphasizing time and again, that the scheduled caste are not the Hindus. And they were never the Hindus. Because the 1911 census proved that the scheduled caste were not the Hindus, and at one point, Dr. Baba Sambedkar um, has said that I, I am, I am a part of part. I don't belong to Hinduism, and um, you know this um, Baba says statement that you know I won't die a Hindu is a very wrongly interpreted statement. He said that I won't die calling myself a Hindu. So there is a vast difference between you know I won't die as a Hindu, and I won't die calling myself a Hindu. So, you know, he was never, in the, in the, you know, attuned to the idea of Hinduism. That proves the point that he was never attuned. He has never taken the mantle of being a Hindu. And uh, so that's the very important point here that he was claiming from the day one of his politics that the, the scheduled caste are the minorities. And that is what is opposed by the Gandhi and the Congress 
saying that the scheduled castes are the Hindus. Very important point. It's a very, very important point that we, we have to understand. And that's why we say that, you know, because the minority status was not granted to the scheduled caste, you know, the, the scheme of providing the principles and the methods by which the representation was provided to the various minorities like Muslims, Anglo-Indians, Indian Christians, Sikhs, and Parsis. The formula is, is given here in this particular, particular uh, column, in particular graph, where we can clearly see that, you know, it, it, it's, it's very unjust for the scheduled caste. And we are going to see in the in the in the memorandum as to how you know it 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 culminates into denying the adequate representation to the scheduled caste. Right? Is this point clear to you all? Sir, uh, regarding this minorities, uh, kindly uh, throw light on it. That the scheduled caste uh, are to be considered under minorities. They were, that's what the point Baba Sambedkar was making from the day one of his public uh, entry that the scheduled caste are not the Hindus. Okay, and, yeah, and it's fine, yeah. it's fine, but but not not we we were not claiming for the uh, having the stature of minorities. Now today, no no, no at that time. No, we were we were we were asking for the minority status. Okay, we were forcing very loudly that we are minorities we are not we, do, we don't belong to the hindu caste system our political problems are different our social problems are different they cannot be solved by being with the hindus so very very important uh, you know if it if, if it had happened in in the indian history that the scheduled caste has become you know had got the minority status like here in 1934 we would have got our own proper representation according to our population, right? Yes, sir. As per as per uh, 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 community in 1941, we were at the stage three uh, as per the population is concerned. Yeah. Yeah, that is the point. So uh, what I'm thinking today, we are uh, Nikhil, is uh, we 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 go up to only one hour, right? So yes, we, sir. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, go on then. Please go on reading. Uh, point number eighteen. Uh, what is the provision which this resolution makes to safeguard the position of the scheduled caste? I give below the two relevant provisions of the resolution. In paragraph 3, the resolution states that no useful purpose will be served by reserving for them depressed class a definite percentage of vacancies out of the number available for Hindus as a whole. But they hope to ensure that duly qualified candidates from the depressed classes are not deprived of fair opportunities of appointment. The way in which government hope to ensure to the scheduled caste, a fair share of representation in the public services is specified in para 716 of the resolution, which reads as follows. In order to secure a fair representation for the depressed classes, duly qualified members of these classes may be nominated to a public service even through recruitment to that service is being made by competition. A pursuit of these proposals brings out two facts. The resolution does not declare the scheduled caste to be a minority. The resolution does not allot to the scheduled caste any fixed proportion of the annual vacancies. Uh, it is, goes without... Yeah. Yeah. Is, this, is this clear to you, Umesh, now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, now it's getting... Please go on reading. Okay. It goes without saying that there is a striking contrast between the provisions made by the government of India for securing the recruitment of uh, scheduled caste and for other minor, minor communities to the public services. This contrast can be expressed in one sentence. The recruitment of the other communities is owing to the resolution, not left to be a matter of discretion. It has been made a matter of obligation. The recruiting authority must fill in vacancy by recruiting a person belonging to the community for which the vacancy is reserved. The recruitment of the scheduled caste, on the other hand, has been made a mere matter of discretion. 
रिक्रूटिंग अथॉरिटी मे फिल एन अनरिजर्व वेकेंसी बाय अपॉइंटिंग अ पर्सन फ्रॉम द शेड्यूल कास्ट Okay, so we will uh, stop here for today. Before uh, we 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 stop here for today, you know, we we can see that how the roots of the uh, discrimination, you know, underrepresentation goes back to the history, right? Those communities which are claiming that they are advanced and they are meritorious, it's not the case, isn't it? They are they have gone into such a position because of the the system of recruitment, because the system favored them. right it's not about their merit it is not about their intrinsic you know talent isn't it so the, the system of adequate representation has been there but it was available to the other communities it was not available to the scheduled castes because they were tied at the mercy of the of the upper caste hindus isn't it so this this is very clear as to you know what are the roots of the where are the roots of the problem you today 20% of the scheduled castes according to the national sample survey data you know are they represented in the universities are they represented in that proportion in the in the various organs of the government that's a real question which has to you know be discussed again and again isn't it and the the government as we know whatever the government is you know they they don't make it an obligatory thing they make it like a matter of discretion actually it should be the matter the representation is a matter of you know oblig is not a matter of discretion it's a matter of obligation right so the people have to be represented according to their percentage of the population there is nothing like merit in the world it's all about who gets what opportunities so this this is you know if some of you can and begin to develop these ideas further and you know come up with 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 the contemporary policy memos as to what should be done in the in the private sector what should be done in the in the public sector what should be done in the universities what should be done at various level how we can ensure that what can be the ways by which the government can solve the problems isn't it so i think what we need today is this rigorous analysis of baba saheb ambedkar to understand the situation to understand the facts to understand the figures to understand what's happening what the current state of affairs and how how to present that present that uh, in terms of the memorandum and how in the policy options so that's a long that's a very very big ordeal but unless a community does it you know to 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 have this power of 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 bringing the truth out and presenting it and advocating for it you know we are not going to make any advancement much advancement isn't it so i think what's important here is you know we have to think about this lot of things like reservation in private sector reservation in in even in army even in judiciary why not isn't what a big deal is there are the scheduled caste inferior physically that they cannot fight at one point of time they won this country for the british isn't it so yeah, if we bahar regiment bahar regiment is the example mahar regiment is there chamar regiment is there then in 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 the spasi regiments are there so many things you know this there are so this this parayas where the fighters isn't it so the point that i am trying to make it here make here is is, is you know it's a matter of how we 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 bring out the facts how we 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 narrate the facts how we praise for the you know uh, acceptance of that i think that's the real question that we all need to tackle in this moment so before we end uh, anybody has anything to say or comment or any general comment anybody has anything to offer sir the statement uh, the recruitment of other communities is owing to the resolution not left to be a matter of discretion it hmm. shows how the important is the law if there is no not law uh, the reform can it is a matter of discretion yes and that's what has happened in the indian history you see this this discretion has been such a fatal cause for the for the underrepresentation of the communities that we come from because you see if, even if there are laws and when they are left at the hands of the executive for example you know they can they can find loopholes in that that's why you also need an and and a representation in executive okay if you are having representation in legislature executive but the you know the cases goes to the court and in court there is no representation for the scheduled castes not yes. at all 
judges appoint themselves bro this is a mockery of of the democracy when you know you do not have adequate representation for the community for example the judgment on the on the reservation are taken by the by the you know uh, court which is represented by the people who are not party to it right they are all upper caste yes Isn't so it? the if they consider it uh, they schedule caste as a internal matter then it will be the case of discretion will not uh, do as per the law if even it is uh, law is there they are not doing they are not doing it because it's it's, it's not uh, you know it's not mandatory on them yes isn't it and and now there is a big problems you know like the rota system and you know the way the seats are filled very complicated very complicated the simple solution was provided by shaw mara shaw mara said that you prepare a negative list said so those communities who have advanced further give them reservation according to their number of you know their population and list all the seats be de reserved you understood what i'm saying yes yes so you you don't prepare the reservation the, the list of the reserved reserved castes you prepare the list of those who have advanced further yes and you know give them only a reservation according to their percentage so for example brahmins overly represented give them only 3% no why do they need more yes no the ewas and all it's a mockery of democracy a book can be written on on with the title roots of discrimination after and before independence <laughs> you should you know some of you should uh, write it why not there is so much material available all the data is available true sir true and very much required yeah. so anyone anybody hello sir Yes, sir. So I, so I think uh, representation should be a matter of national interest, sir. Hmm. And uh, I mean, without representation, I mean, democratic exercise cannot be strengthened. Hmm. Hmm. So for a for an efficient and optimized uh, democratic functioning, I mean, representation is vital. I think that is the crux on which democracy stands. Very true. And right. and if we remove that part, then I. Th i don't think we are left with any form of i mean i don't think we are left with it's a very serious point and important points sir thank you sir because representation is democracy representation is nationalism it cannot be you know just 3% 4% people defining nationalism right yes sir and and, and baba sambedkar has said uh, you know we need this national sentiments just to rotate the wheels of democracy Okay, so patriotic patriotic patriotism means nothing if it is not serving the people, right? Indeed, sir. So you know, in the previous classes, we have seen that very beautifully, right, uh, Nikhil? How Baba Sambedkar has said that we should not make the fetish out of nationalism. That is what was the stand of Fule as well. Uh, yes, sir. So it was mentioned as well that uh, the people. Uh, in the garb of nationalism uh, uh, don't like uh, put down their uh, you can say benefits and what their adequate uh, say should be uh -huh. so that uh, they should not be too much blind uh, for that and sir yeah it sir. is sir uh, one last point sir and sir it is precisely because the the opportunities i mean these uh, upper caste availed and because of which they are at a certain socio economic they are operating at a certain mm. socio economic level in contrast to the backward or the scheduled caste it is precisely because of these opportunities that developed during at and to which also british favored them and because of which they are operating at such a different socio economic level actually That's and right. had those opportunities have we not been robbed of those upper hmm. opportunities then all these uh, all these uh, casteist statements like especially when our people or student center campus and we see i mean like 
recently in the iit we saw two suicides in a single month mm-hmm. and it speaks of the length i mean like these uh, how these statements are are passed off in a casual remark i mean this idea of not being meritorious or some or and similar and also i mean the whole crux remains that it is because of these people got the opportunities and the british favored them hmm. that is why so is their position in the society or else it could have been us so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very true very true it it is about getting the opportunities nothing else and as yeah, exactly we, as we are going to read further we will see how the british had had their hand in 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 perfect social system that they favored they didn't want to cause issues you know so uh, you know we 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 cannot absolve the uh, british of their crimes against our communities mm. so uh any anything else anybody has anything to say uh, yes sir so i just wanted to thank uh, people who have joined and especially to the people who have uh, joined for the first time uh we have a whatsapp group uh, called uh, virtual reading session uh, this virtual reading session is going on since uh, last more than 3 years now and uh, if you just uh, wherever you got this uh, meeting link you can uh, message me i will uh, add you to the virtual reading group in addition to that uh, i also i think uh, want mangesh sir to uh, uh, tell about the 8:30 uh, pm session that is happening today yes see we uh, uh the nikhil and i often discuss about you know what will be the best way to uh, you know uh initiate our people into the vast knowledge of baba saheb ambedkar and uh, and i think this is uh, these these classes are has, has only one aim if if you ask me from my point of view is to really initiate our community to read further into baba saheb's writings and speeches because there is so much as we can see you know in this in the in the class of one hour there is so much to learn there is so much to you know train ourselves from this very precious treasure that baba saheb ambedkar has left behind so oh, another another area that we are working on is to conduct a few uh, courses so we have an upcoming uh, course of 6 weeks uh, which will be led by uh, professor peter friedlander who will be uh, you know uh, talking about uh, kabir from the point of view of baba saheb ambedkar buddha and so on and so forth which is going to be very interesting you know way of uh, understanding and practicing the philosophy of kabir who was one of the gurus of baba saheb ambedkar so please stay tuned and tonight you know there is at 8:30 uh, there is a, a, a talk which uh, you know i will uh, share a link to on on mahatma jyotiba phule another great guru of of baba saheb ambedkar and you know uh, completion of 150 years of the satya shodak samaj so we share that link Th- nikhil thank you for, remi- for, for a reminder and uh, over to you nikhil okay uh, okay thanks uh, everyone we'll conclude the session then yes thank you thank you thank you thank you